Praise the Lord. Welcome to today's Dandy Way Bible Study. I am Dr. Tunji Akintila, and I'm happy to invite everyone to today's Bible study. We are studying the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, and we are on chapter 26. This is part two. Let's start with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every opportunity to study your word, that we may get to know you more and more day by day, as eternal life is in knowing you. Father, we pray that your word will go forth powerfully today, uh, not by, uh, 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 by power, not by might, uh, but by your spirit, says the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for uh, glorifying yourself in our lives, in today's Bible study. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, Genesis chapter 26. We did part one last week, and uh, that was verses 1 to 12. As we read last week, verses 1 to 12 can be divided into two parts. Okay, There is a continuous narrative of what happened, to Isaac, but there's also like a parenthesis, a story within a story. We're going to deal with the parenthesis today, but we'll do a quick review of what we studied last week first. Uh, the topic of today's uh, study is transgenerational causes, transgenerational causes. But before we start, let me take the opportunity to wish all the mothers happy Mother's Day. Yes, we appreciate all of our wonderful mothers. May God continue to bless you as you uh, do your, your, your duty in taking care of uh, all the children. Everyone needs a mother. Praise God for all the wonderful mothers. Thank you so much. You're well appreciated. May God bless you. So, uh, to do a quick review of what we studied last week, we are on Genesis uh, chapter 26. Maybe what I will do is read verses 1 to 12. And then we're going to split our discussion into two parts. So, I have the NIV today, New International Version, and I'm going to read Genesis chapter 26 verses 1 to 12. And I welcome you to get your Bibles and read along as well. Now, there was a famine in the land. Besides the previous famine in Abraham's time, and Isaac went to Abimelech of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands my decrees, and my instructions. So, Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, she is my sister, because he was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought the men of this place might kill me on account of Rebekah, because she is beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, She is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, Because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the men might well have slept with your wife, and you will have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, Anyone who harms this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Isaac planted crops in that land, and the same year reaped a hundredfold. 
because the Lord blessed them. Really quick. One thing we didn't mention last week, confession of wrong is followed with a blessing. We should not hide our wrong. If you did wrong, if you sin, you sin. You know, just confess and you'll be blessed. The same thing happened to Abraham when he uh, stole the same lie in, in Egypt and he was confronted by Pharaoh. He didn't lie about it. And what happened? He was blessed. So uh, that's just a quick uh, reminder there. So what we studied last week was about famines. That famines happens. And no one really knows why. It's just a fact of life. Famine refers to widespread scarcity of food, which has happened several times in history. And then we have this current COVID-19 pandemic, which has not ended yet. We are like in the third year now of COVID-19, and it has not ended yet. And there's so much anxiety, so much confusing information from every corner, from the media, from the scientists, from the politicians, from every corner, everywhere you look, your employer. There's so many conflicting information. Even the guy down the street has his own opinion about COVID-19. And if we are not careful, we get carried away from all of those information and many develop anxiety because we are listening to the wrong crowd. As a child of God, we should listen to God because whether we like it or not, famines happen. It's just a fact of life. And as I mentioned, the COVID-19 is like a, a case of a famine or a natural disaster. And regardless, though, of whatever may be going around in the life of a Christian, God's promise stands. Because as we discussed last week, God promised Isaac, uh, actually first promised Abraham, and now became Isaac. Okay, the promise became Isaac's of giving him the land, which we found later is the land flowing with milk and honey. But what did Isaac experience? Famine. So the devil may want to confuse us, you know, give you the wrong perspective of what is going, because for some reason, the devil can manipulate the environment. And if you are not careful, we focus on the environment and miss out on God's blessings in our lives. So no matter what could be going on, God's promise stands. Because, as we found out, things are not always what they seem. There was famine in the land. There was no food. Plants are dying. All of these things are going on. But God showed up to Isaac and reminded him of his promises, that his promise stands. And no matter what could be going on, no matter what famine, his word will be accomplished. His promise will happen. And he told Isaac what to do. Stay in this land. Isaac even pro proceeded to sow in the land. And as we found in verse 12, he reaped a hundredfold in the same year. So we need to choose who we listen to. As Jesus Christ told us in Mark 4, 24, be careful what you hear. And in Luke 8, 18, be careful how you hear. Because it is what you pay attention to that's going to determine what you're going to get out of this life, what you're going to get from God. If you pay attention to all the stress, all the numbers, so many people dying, so many people sick, so many businesses folding up, and social distancing, and wear your mask, and don't go anywhere, and uh, don't know handshake, you know, almost no, don't even breathe, <laughs> you know. So if you listen to all of those, and you pay attention to it, you will get anxiety. But if you listen to God, the promise of God, that God will bless you as a child of God, is what we, sh we should listen to. Keep listening to messages like this. Keep studying your Bible. Keep listening to the Holy Spirit. And God's promise in your life shall be accomplished. Praise God. 
So we should listen to God. Listen to God, not to not to CNN. You, you, you need to know what's going on in the world out there. But it's not to make it the main issue in your life and go into arguments with people and you know controversies after controversies. No. Listen to God. So we now go to today's study. And as I mentioned, the topic of our discussion today is transgenerational causes. Transgenerational causes. That is the main theme of the uh, uh, part of the scriptures that, that, that we are studying, the parenthesis which is from verses 6 to 11. And I'm going to read those again so that we'll be, we can have it right in front of us so we can uh, put everything in perspective. So let's read again Genesis 26, verses 6 to 11. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, she is my sister, because he was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought, the men of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca because she's beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife Rebecca. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, She's really your wife. Why did you say she's my sister? Isaac answered him, Because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? One of the men <clears throat> might well have slept with your wife, and you will have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, anyone who harmed this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. So Abim, uh, Isaac, there was a famine in the land. Isaac went to Gerar. To Abimelech. Abimelech is the title of the king of the Philistines. Okay. And while he was there, lied to the people that his, his wife, Rebecca, was his sister. And from what we studied so far, exactly the same thing happened to Abraham. There was famine in the land. Abraham went to Egypt, told the Egyptians the wife, Sarah, is the sister. Okay. Which is a half truth, but still a lie. And it happened a second time. It happened twice to Abraham that he lied, you know, even in this same land of the Philistines. He lied, lied to maybe a previous Abimelech, which I said is a title of the king. The same thing. So what we can see that the theme of this parenthesis, which was inserted right here, is about transgenerational causes. Okay. We should be careful, okay, of whatever experiences our parents had. We should be careful whatever experiences members of our extended family, you know, whatever experiences they are having, we should be careful of the same. So, we are going to talk about transgenerational causes, okay? A curse... And I'm not talking about C-U-S-S, -S, okay? I'm, we're talking about C-U-R-S-E-S, -S, curse. It's like the reverse of a blessing. It's a negative blessing. It's to will bad omen on somebody, all right? Curses tend to not just affect one individual. It tends to run in families. You see the same thing happening again again within a particular family okay so it tends to be transgenerational and as we can see some cultures i i heard that the scottish culture okay in europe that they they curse not c-u-s-s americans curse c-u-s-s that's a joke okay the scottish people curse they will bad omen on themselves. Let's not take that lightly. In Nigeria, <laughs> several of the Nigerian cultures, the Yoruba culture, 
owes their professional, I'm sorry, the way I said it, but that is the truth. They curse a lot. I mean, every little, any little thing that you do wrong, somebody is cursing somebody. It's, it's just you're so rampant that, that, that you wonder why the, the society keeps going down the tube. Because everybody is cursing everybody, so you get the negative result. Now you're, you're, you're crying, God, why? You cursed your neighbor. Your neighbor is now dead. <laughs> why? Why this community is going down the tube? Some cultures curse. That is the point I want to bring up. Some cultures curse more than others. The American society curse, as I said, CUSS, they do not will bad omen. As bad as all the four letter words can be. Those are, they are, they are, they are harmless compared to curse. So, Coming back to the curses, beware of whatever tripped up your parents. You know, whatever tripped up your parents, you have to pray against it. Watch out for it. Don't let the devil deceive you because he want to get you on the same area. He want you to fall on the same slope. He want you to to doesn't want to pull the same trick on you because it must have been working on members of your family. You know, uh, I heard a preacher mention once that if you this is this is this is an aside. If you want to know for the young people who want to get married, <laughs> if you want to know what your wife is going to look at like, what your wife is going to look like at a particular age, look at her mother. Well, well, however the mother looks at that age. 65, 66, whatever. That is exactly how your wife is going to look when she gets to that age. So, the same thing with these transgenerational causes. Whatever tripped up our parents, whatever tripped up our uncles and members of our families, we ought to be on the lookout. We ought to particularly watch out for those things and be prayerful about it. That it will not happen to me. So, Curses. Let's look at the signs. We're going to look at the problems, okay? But can guarantee everyone that we will also look at the solution. We are not just going to talk about problem causes and leave everyone in in a limbo. So, uh, what are the signs of these causes? Mental or emotional breakdown, especially if it's not just happening to one person and is repeating in a family. Hereditary diseases. I mean, even the, the word hereditary kind of gives it out. It runs in this particular family. Repeated miscarriages or related female problems. Okay? Breakdown of marriage, family alienation, you know, people cutting themselves off, you don't talk to that uncle, you don't talk to that auntie, the siblings just cut themselves off, they don't communicate, family alienation, that's part of the manifestations of causes. Continuous financial insufficiency, poverty <laughs> is not normal, read Genesis 9-1, if Genesis 8.22 and Genesis 9.1 is true. There should be no poverty anywhere on this earth. So, continuous financial insufficiency, especially if it continues. You know, everyone goes through some periods when you could face some challenges. If you are poor, that is a sign of a curse. Accident prone. People that just, you know, they have this accident and then they tripped and fell again and then the same person hurt the knee and then the same person had been accident prone. History of suicides or unnatural death. And I have the list all here that we can look at and make a note if we want to. Now, if we really want a full discourse on the causes, it is found in Deuteronomy 28. 
Deuteronomy 28. There are 68 verses in that chapter. The first 14 talks about blessings. The next 54 verses talks about the curses. If you want a, a full detail of what causes are, Deuteronomy 28 verses 15 to the end of the chapter, verse 64. So, as I mentioned, we are not just going to talk about the problem. And I mentioned Nigeria. I believe that is the same way it is in majority of African countries. You know, generally we want to think, oh, no, that's not me. But let's be sincere with ourselves. Let's look at our own lives. If you recognize something that seems to be repeated and repeated in multiple members of a family, time to come against it because we can't come against it. What do we do about it? Commit your life to Christ if you have not saved yet. You know, Romans 10, 9. Confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and profess him with your own mouth and ask him to come into your life. Confess your sins and you will be saved. Because curses, all curses, have been broken in Jesus Christ. Praise God. All curses are broken in Christ. Praise the Lord. Curses have been nailed to the cross. Let's read Galatians 3.13. That is such an important verse. Galatians 3.13. I'm going to open in my Bible where I still have uh, the NIV. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hung on a pole. The original King James said, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Because it's the, it's the, it is revealed in the Old Testament that whatever is hung on a tree is cursed. When the Jews saw Jesus Christ hanging on the tree, the cross, they know this is a curse. So all of the curses in our lives have been nailed to the cross. And if you have listened to that call today and you give your life to Christ, those curses have been nailed to the cross. Now you can stand against them. Stand against them. You got to do your part, though. You got to do your part to recognize them. Go before God in prayer and God will help us. All of us, <laughs> myself included. Okay, I'm, I'm originally Nigerian. So you know, you know, there's something somewhere on anyone you can see from Africa. There's probably, probably something somewhere, more than likely. But all of those have been neutralized. They are under the blood. They are ineffective in our lives. The blessing of God shall come over us. The promises of God in our lives shall be accomplished. And God will be glorified. Thank you very much for your attention today. That is the end of our study. We'll continue with part three next time. God bless you.